Morning folks, today we are going to look at Rylands and Fletcher. Okay, the first point for the AO1 on Rylands and Fletcher is that Rylands and Fletcher is a strict liability tort. It was established in the case of Rylands and Fletcher in 1868. It's strict liability. This means there is no requirement to show fault. Secondly, who is the claimant? So the claimant is the person who must have an interest in the land in order to bring a claim. And you can quote the case of Weller. Third point, who is the defendant? The defendant must be the accumulator or occupier of the land that the dangerous thing was accumulated on. So generally they are the, the owner of the land. Point four. There are four elements for the claimant to prove on the balance of probabilities. Remember, this is a civil case. Fifth point. This is element one. So element one is the bringing onto the land and an accumulation. So what happens is the defendant must bring a substance onto the land and let it accumulate. So let it kind of add up and be stored there. Two cases that I would mention here. First of all, Giles, there's no liability if the thing occurs naturally. So for example, weeds. So if weeds spread from one property to a neighbouring property, remember it has to be a neighbouring property, then there's no liability in Rylands and Fletcher. The case of Miles says the things that or the thing that escapes does not need to be the thing that's accumulated. So in the case of Miles, you had explosives being accumulated, but it was rocks that escaped. That can be Rylands and Fletcher. Point six, this is now element two. The thing is likely to cause mischief if it escapes, and there is an escape. So for example, poisonous fumes. You've got a case example called Hale, where a chairoplane, which is one of those seats on a fairground ride that swings round, um, flew off and injured somebody. So in this example, you know, a chairoplane, yes, is likely to cause mischief if it escapes, and the chairoplane did escape. It, the case of Hale, you can say, is a rare use of personal injury. In this day and age, you would now use negligence. So if somebody is injured, you would probably go for negligence. You've also got the case of Stannard. Now, Stannard is quite an important case because scenario questions like to use examples of tyres. These tyres caught on fire and the fire spread causing damage in Stannard. And the courts turned around and said, well, this is not Rylands and Fletcher because tyres are unlikely to cause mischief if they escape. Yes, the fire was the thing that escaped, but they said that this is not Rylands and Fletcher because tyres themselves are not exceptionally dangerous. Point number seven, which is element three. The thing escaping must cause foreseeable damage. You can quote Transco. It was unforeseeable in the case of Cambridge water that chemicals would seep through concrete. So if it's too remote, so if the damage is not foreseeable, it's too remote, this element is not satisfied, therefore it's not Rylands. The eighth point, which is element four, there must be a non-natural use of the land. So this means, non-natural means, extraordinary and unusual transco. This could include things stored in large quantities, so chemicals. And what you'll find in exam questions is they'll have lots of tyres or lots of chemicals or lots of oil or something like that. So generally, you know, it will satisfy that bit. Be careful when you're looking at domestic water pipes, because Ricard said the use of water in domestic pipes is not extraordinary. It's not unusual. Therefore, it's a natural use of the land. So element four is not satisfied. The other thing to just bear in mind is if there's a public benefit um, to what's happening, then the land use is likely to be seen as natural. And that's the British Selenese case. OK, the defendant also has a range of full defences, which is very useful because this means if they um, can prove that so the defendant would then have to prove the defence, they will not be liable under Rylands. So the first one is act of a stranger, the case of Ribby. You've then got Act of God, which is like extreme weather, the case of Carstairs. Statutory authority, 
Chelsea Waterworks. So if the defendant has legal permission to do what they're doing, they're unlikely to be liable. Um, equally, if the claimant benefits or the claimant has consented, they are also um, likely to be able to have a defence of consent. And then contributory negligence, the case of Froome. So this is a partial defence and the claimant is in some way to blame, therefore their damages will be reduced. And then finally, 10th point, I would just put in what the defendant is Oh, sorry, what the claimant is seeking. The claimant is seeking damages. Now, pecuniary damages are things like if your garage burnt down, you could say, right, I need £5,000. It's when you can put a monetary value on it. Or the uh, claimant could be wanting an injunction from the defendant. So to order the defendant to, I don't know, stop storing chemicals on their land. So that's the AO1 for Rylands. If you want to learn about the evaluation, look out for the AO3.